Hi, I'm Gareth and today I'm going to be trying to cook and I'm going to be making my version of seitan and in a way this is more of a guideline really rather than a recipe and uh, you can use this for anything you want to really. You can um, change its form by different, uh, making the flavour slightly different or making it more and less dense and you can use this in anything you want to. I hope this gives you a little inspiration on trying different things and I hope you enjoy the video and here we go. So we start off with cutting up some onions. So this is uh, my technique of cutting an onion. I tend to try to have a situation where I cut them as quickly as I possibly can and I don't tend to have um, issues with irritating eyes. The longer you take, the more irritated your eyes get, really. In this recipe, well, I call it a recipe, but it's guidelines really, we're going to be using six onions. This can be scalable for however much seitan you want to make. So I want to make a large batch that I can split up into uh, bags at the end and freeze. And this should uh, last a bit longer. I find it a bit, a bit of an effort to be doing it every day. You can um, use as few onions as you want or as many as you want. Obviously, you need to be able to have a pot big enough to cook it in there. I'm using the um, inner pot from the instant pot on this one. I find it's a great large container and uh, it's really handy for kind of doing this stage of the process. I'm going to be using the saute mode on it. Obviously you can use uh, your normal hob and anything, it's probably a bit more uh, adjustable. I find sometimes the instant pot saute mode is a bit ferocious or just not fast enough. In some ways um, what we're doing is infusing water with flavour. So the initial ingredient is uh, obviously onions and uh, you want to infuse this water with the onions so let it come up to heat a bit give it a couple of stirs and uh, really it's um, looking for kind of an onion soup kind of density of particles really so it takes a while to come up to, to temperature because there's so much up there like in this instance we're going to be doing a beef style seitan and uh, the purpose of this whole process is to kind of break all the onions down into, until they're really really soft and infuse it with as much flavour as possible. So I'm using six onions in this instance and I think I end up using something like um, eight oxo um, vegan sorry eight meat-free oxo cubes. Now that it's bubbling away and everything's uh, getting infused, keep on stirring it. As I said before, the um, Instant Pot tends to be ferociously hot or a little bit too cool. So you really do need to keep on stirring these things in. Essentially looking for, to make all the mixture infused and all your onions really, really, really soft. Once you're pleased and happy that that has happened, I tend to um, use a stick immersion blender and make it really smooth. You can leave it with just the chunks in, it would still work and you'd have small soft onions going through your seitan, but I kind of prefer to kind of get that kind of more kind of full meat kind of end result so it really does come down to your own personal personal preference and you will get a technique for it in the end 
and a feel for what you really want to get in the, as an end result. So at this stage, we're going to be infusing more flavors into it. What I tend to do is have some idea of what the end result is and what I'm aiming for. In this case, it's just somewhat beefy. So I've already got the OXO meat-free OXO cubes in there. And um, I'm using the Bisto to thicken it up a bit as well as add a little bit of flavor. But depending on what you want to get in the end result, you can use things like vegetable stock cubes and um, like any kind of flavoring you want. You can put chili in there, you can put Tabasco in there, you can do um, Worcester sauce, that would work. There's literally anything you want to put in there, you can put in there. And what we're looking to do is have a flavor which is just a bit too strong. Because when you actually you add the vital wheat gluten, everything will become just somewhat diluted. And you want the flavor to kind of overpower the natural flavor of the vital wheat gluten, which actually, you know, it does have quite a, a flavor that you do need to overcome. So you really want to have a mixture that's nice and moderately thick, but just a bit too much flavor to be pleasant in a way. You want it just to be just a bit overpowering because that will come down in the end result. This is my go-to seasoning. It's quite a simple little thing, uh, available on Amazon. And uh, I can't say it's the most interesting of things, but it gives just a, an extra element to anything. And it's super easy just to add, just for an extra element of flavor. So I definitely recommend everybody has a big old tub of the Italian seasoning uh, blend. So keep on stirring until you're pleased with the flavour and the texture. As I said, it's kind of slightly thick gravy. And you really just want to have just a, a bit too strong, really. You want, if, if it's a bland, then you've got to get a really bland end result. You want a really strong flavour. But you'll get a feel for it in the end. And the more you do it, the more used to those levels you'll get. Once that's all finished, you just leave it to cool and then we'll start with the mixing and kneading process. On to the mixing and kneading. You could do this by hand, but after the first couple of times of doing the whole process by hand, I just found I didn't have the patience or the energy to keep doing it by hand. But you really would have to keep on kneading it for about 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes to get the kind of consistency you'd want from a meteor kind of seitan. Obviously, well not obviously really, the more you knead the seitan, the closer the texture of the end result will be. And um, what I've done is I'd probably say to fill the bowl about 25% full so that it doesn't um, become too much for the mixer to handle. So I, I like to use the uh, K mixer on this because I think it's quite good for both the mixing and the kneading really. And what we're trying to do initially, and if you're doing this by hand, do this in a bowl and then the kneading on a surface and you can kind of get a feel for when it's dry enough. But the first stage is just to mix your flavor mixture, essentially, with the vital wheat gluten. And what we're trying to do is to mix it until a dough starts to form. As you can see, what happens is that when the dough starts to come together, it will start lifting from the sides of the bowl. And you keep on adding extra until it starts really coming together. And it's, it takes a little while and it can be surprising how much um, wheat gluten goes in to make this work. But just keep on mixing and uh, obviously you can turn it off and check it every now and again to make sure that it's um, looking right. I will probably keep this 
shot going for now, just so you can see the dough coming together. But I think I do check it just in a little while and uh, just go from there. So at this point, it's just a little on the wet side. It's um, a bit foamy and uh, that's almost where we want it. But for a denser uh, seitan, you really want to have, have it the drier side of damp, really. <laughs> so I just, added, like, I just added a little extra. And uh, once you get the kind of moisture level that you're looking for, which is, as I said, almost dry almost the drier side of damp what you do is you just leave it to mix at a medium speed for about i usually do about six minutes but depending on what flavor you're going for and what texture you're going for you might reduce that because if you keep it at a lower length of time you'll end up with a looser seitan at the end and we're going for something a bit dense on this one. So here it is at the end. Oops, should have turned that off first. Don't make that mistake. And uh, as you can see, after about six minutes of constant kneading, it's all elastic, which is what we're looking for. So keep on repeating this with as much as you need to do. I ended up with four batches, I think, in the end. I put them all to one side and then once they're finished I'm just kneading them a little bit further just to incorporate all the different batches into one and then that means that to me anyway the uh, end result is a little bit more consistent because whereby you might have mixed one a bit more or mixed some a bit less or you might have had one that was a bit drier and one that's a bit looser then it'll end up all being incorporated and that's what you that consistency is nicer to have as you can see it becomes quite uh, shiny and really really elasticated because obviously it's um, a lot of gluten really so it's super glutinous so what I do for batch cooking is I use a normal steamer as like you say I cut it into sections and I use three maybe palm size fillets per layer and you need to have a lot of space because as it cooks it will expand quite a lot in fact and what you're trying to do is get it to be kind of firm essentially it will end up being really quite firm and halfway through cooking time which about 20 minutes in I tend to change the layers up from the bottom to the top so that obviously in the version of a steamer I've got you just have to take them out and then put them into the other steam basket and they should end up looking a bit like this and um, what I do is I can use this for any other things you can grill it or stir fry it and you know my intention is to put some use ideas up on this channel so like one of my favorite things to do is uh like a kebab and that works quite nicely with her so you just put it to one side and let it cool and then what i tend to do is portion it up into 200 gram portions because I got quite a big appetite you know you can have as much as or as little as you want because they tend to be very um, low calories and they've got very um, high protein and low calorie so it's up to you on the portion sizes what I do is I re reuse these um, Tesco freezer bags 
I have, tend to have um, two portions per bag and then I just take them out and uh, defrost them however I want to use them. They're fine as they are, but you can use them in any way you want. Things I've done, as I said, kebabs, I've done beef and black bean sauce, you know, anything you want that you would generally use beef in. And, uh, and there's my little stash of uh, seitan, ready to use for the foreseeable. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you again another time.